Assalamu alaikum. Mr. Moderator, our distinguished guests, brothers and sisters, our friends and, and our enemies. But you, anyway, you were, they, they, I know, you know, you were accustomed to the word mooly or something. You know? Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do oh some Italians too. Gosh, they used to call me Munja Cake. Or Munja Cake is a very bad word, by the way, right? Wow. Right. It means like it means poo cakes, but the other word. Right. Right. Yes. That's so so I didn't know what it meant, right? And, uh, you know, but I was kidding that what not. But um anyways, uh I'll, during during the 80s was when we started seeing some immigration, right? Okay. Right. Because I had moved to to Brampton when I was young, right? From Malton to Brampton, both of these are like cities outside of Toronto, right? They're okay. part of Toronto now, right? But uh, I moved from Malton to Brampton when I was younger. Brampton at those times it was mostly the same, same, same type of thing. Mostly white people, and you know, now Brampton is like India. It's like just really, yeah. It's all South Asians, all South Asians, right? But wow. I saw, I saw the change, right? I was you witnessing that. You see, I was that witnessing happen? it. Yeah, I was witnessing it. So. Um, when I was in high school, I really didn't know what Islam was because we, there were no Muslims, mm -hmm. right? I never met any Muslims, <laughs> right? And I found out about Islam from the nation of Islam, right? My story is on the young smirks anyways, right? So, but, but okay. the, the whole point was that when I finally became Muslim, right? It was a lot of, uh, it was very mixed because there weren't really that many Muslims, so the Muslims, because there weren't that many, right, they had to work together. Okay. They couldn't do, they, they couldn't afford to do that cultural stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So we were all together. Like we had, you know, Pakistanis, Egyptians, uh, converts, a lot of converts, um, you know, uh, Ethiopians, Somali, like we're all kind of like hanging out together as one right. group. Right. And we're all kind of going to the same massage it as one group and there was no there wasn't this dogmatic stuff that we see today right yeah so but you saw as i said as you get older you start seeing the 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 shift then we started seeing the cultural mystery but like i said the first one i saw was jamaat tablik then i saw somalian mysteries and then we saw the egyptian mysteries and and they're like okay and we're just but i'm still thinking in my head, okay, it's still the mosque. You know, these are my Somalian brothers, my Pakistani brothers. So I'm seeing them as brothers, and I'm growing up seeing them as my. I consider them my brothers, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Not knowing that these people don't consider me their brother. Like, you know what I mean? They don't see me in the yeah. same way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, and that's the reality. Yeah. Right. You know what it's I mean? Kind of like that. I seen a video when. Uh, when I think I think it was George Floyd when he had died, there was a, a video of some a, a it looked like a Somali man in 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 Canada, and he's saying I I the, the George this guy who died I don't care much as about him as I care about the bottom of this shoe and he you know with yeah the, the, he said he said the the making of do between my fingers is more important than the life of this yes yeah you that's know, yeah. yeah yeah so imagine imagine there's some Muslim saying this. Right. Is this from the Sunnah of the Prophet says No. Is this is this from the example of the Prophet says at all? No. Nah, but why? But what brought him? Like, what is going on with the well, Somali yeah. community? Yeah. What, it, to it's make like, him to, say that. To bring this, to be that bold to come out and say that, right? But at, at, at least you know the Somalians they checked him, right? That's true. They did. They they, they did. checked him. Absolutely. Yeah. Because if he was an Arab saying it, I, believe me, they wouldn't have checked him. Yes. They would not have checked him. Was you know, he right? from Canada, by the way? He's from Canada, too. You know okay. what I mean? So you okay. can imagine, right, it's the Somalians, right? They, when, when did they come to the West? It, it was in the 90s when, when they had their civil war. Yeah. That's, when he, started seeing, that's when he started seeing the Somalians come to the West. Mm -hmm. And who did the Somalian community identify with first? African Americans, of course, of course. <laughs> black people. Yeah, the black people. up until this very day, yes. <laughs> right? Yes, we are the first ones that they identified with, and we welcomed them with open arms, obviously. Yeah, yes. right? and look what this 
Look at the mentality. The payback. Yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it's not an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not an isolated incident. This, this, is, this is something, this anti-Black racism. You know, imagine he's, he's an African, right? He probably, maybe he might have experienced racism. Canada's a little bit different. You know what I mean? He might not have, right? Mm -hmm. Because he's, he looked young. You know what right. I mean? So if he's if he's if you're younger, you probably haven't really experienced, experienced it. You know, because okay. okay. Canadians are generally they're not really racist like that. You know, I mean, okay. it, it 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 exists, it exists, but but uh, mostly with believe it or not, the cultural communities, not not so much the white people. Believe it or not, <laughs> right? That if you go out west, then you're gonna experience some some racism out west, right? But not in okay. the Toronto and these type of places, right? So. You know, it's not really likely that, but he ha he had the audacity and the and the the bravery to to say what he really felt about black people in his heart, and you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, it, it and, was, and and and, I mean, and the, the people the people who he was with were jeering him on. He's like, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right. You know, that's right, that's right. You know, it really it doesn't matter. He doesn't matter. They're jeering him on. So it's not wow. one person we're talking about. You see? So, but anyway. What creates what, that type of, what creates that type of, uh, that hatred? What creates that type of hatred? You know, I, as, well, I, I just, you know. Well, we already know that there's a long history of, of, of racism against black people from Arabs. It's not, it didn't start yesterday or the day before, up until this very day. We're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of anti-Black racism with the Arabs against uh, Black people. Yes. Right? And, uh, you know, Somal the Somalians, they have an interesting history, actually, you know, because the, the it, it was the Italians that came to try to uh, colonize them. But they're, they're actually, they're like a, they're, you have to give them props because they're like a warrior class. They're like one of these people yes. that, will, yeah. that will fight, you know? <laughs> You know, and I, and I respect that, you know, <laughs> you know, but well, the uh, Italians, they went to, I think they went to uh, Ethiopia, Ethiopia, but they yeah. used, they used the Somalians to actually get to the Ethiopians. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But I mean, but then how this last, some things happened and it, 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 it uh, broke down before they actually for, before uh, uh, the, the Italians went in mm -hmm. and then Gr Grazino, who was the general at the time, this is where we get, the uh movie the lion of the desert they decided to go to italy mm -hmm. yeah and yeah. i mean not to italy they decided to go to libya excuse me yeah uh, and that's where we get the movie Literally, lion of I the desert it. from yeah yeah. That's right. yeah yeah but but um uh anyway uh the thing with uh africans that uh, we were talking about this too right uh -huh. is that africans uh they've never actually seen themselves as a racial conglomerate right up until this way no matter where you go uh black people in general whether they're africans or westerners they don't categorize themselves as a racial conglomerate and that is their big weakness mm -hmm. because they they just don't unite so somalians you know they they usually they were they were united up until the the 90s until the civil war now you find them even within themselves they speak the same language have the same religion whatever you know there's this one it's a unique type of country you know it, like it, like everybody there is same religion same language you know even um they 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 culturally they think the same but now they have the somali somalis and the somali landers right yeah and Again, where does this divide and conquer come from? Yes. You know? The Europeans. Yeah. Europeans, yes. <laughs>
yes. they've been doing it. They've been, they done been doing it, right? Yeah, this is their play, but they, they can't see it because because we're from the West. We know what's happening, right? Because we've seen it so many times, right? But they can't see it, right? And they they just kind of do the same thing, right? So they come with that mentality that Europeans gave them, right? It's even with Africans when Africans when they see. Uh, um, Western Afri- uh, like African Americans, they don't see them like Africans. They see them like how white people see us, like right. animals, degenerates. You know what I mean? They don't. They don't see like brothers. You understand? Absolutely. You know. So because when you when you look with the for example the South Asian community, they will unite based upon their South Asianness. Right, the mm-hmm. Arabs will unite based upon their Arabness. White people will unite based upon their whiteness. Black people will not unite based upon their blackness. And why is that? Why is that? It's because other groups have historically told us that we are not allowed to unite based upon our blackness. And we repeat it, repeat that nonsense. So if you go to, like I said, if you go to Brampton today, it's like, it's like India. Right? How is it like that? Because those people unite, yeah, based upon their South Asianness. Yes. yes, they come together. They operate as a unit. Right. Now that that's kind of funny because one time I was when I was driving for South for Dallas driving yeah. buses uh, the the city bus for Dallas, mm-hmm. I, I would go into this area called South Dallas, mm-hmm. and um. You know, in this area, it's it's a predominantly uh, black area. It's very impoverished, mm-hmm. and so I you would I would stop at the end of my route. I would stop at the store to get a sandwich or whatever, you know, some, something to drink, and I would see that the 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 owners were uh, either I couldn't tell for sure, but they were Southeast Asianers, mm-hmm. and 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 so it just made me mad how they would treat the people. Mm-hmm. You know, they would just treat them like less than, I mean, a lot of the, some of the, the, they were, they were having relations with the women because the women needed credit or things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Have, they would, they would work out deals that they would have relations with them. So I, 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 it it really started to bother me. Mm -hmm. I went around that whole neighborhood and talked to everybody. I said, man, we have to uh, stop spending money at this store. Yes, it, it 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 affected me. This much. I said, you have to stop. We cannot let this. They said. So they said, well, where can we go? I said, let's go up the street to this other store. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy's. You know, he's he's a Spanish guy, but he's a lot better. Mm-hmm. You know, he tr- treats you guys with dignity. He might be a little bit more expensive because he doesn't get the volume. I mm-hmm. said, but I'll talk to him. Mm-hmm. So, but they 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 could never. I said, this guy right here, this this South Asian, he's taking the money out of this hood mm-hmm. and taking it over there to somewhere else. Yeah, exactly. I said, he's he's not doing anything. That's like rape. He's not doing anything for the community where he's making his money. Exactly. So you got to understand how the dynamics of the economics of of um, blacks in the West works, right? Blacks were brought here for what? For one free reason. For work. Free yeah. work. Free labor. Economics. Labor. Economics. Labor. Free labor, as you said. Mm-hmm. You understand? We were the labor force and the property and the insurance. Capitalism was um, the fuel behind capitalism was slavery. Yes. Right? You, yeah. Without slavery, you don't have these, these huge... Um, insurance companies, you don't have these uh, these huge banks and this banking system and, and all this kind of stuff. The point behind capitalism is what people don't really understand how capitalism works. Capitalism, why is it, why is capitalism capitalism? What it is, is that somebody owns capital and has somebody else on his capital working on that capital in order to bring that person wealth. Thus, capitalism. But what's, what makes capitalism so special? The reason what makes capitalism so special is that 
the way to obtain that capital is you buy the capital from cash in advance. Mm -hmm. Before capitalism, what the people do? They used to save their money mm -hmm. and then buy what they wanted. Mm -hmm. With capitalism, what do you do? You take a loan, you purchase the capital, and then you start paying, paying like, back. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. That's how it works. So now, Black people, we were the capital. You understand? Mm -hmm. People took out loans. They took out insurance. And what did we do? We not only were we the capital, we were capital, building capital for white people. Mm -hmm. Transfer up until today, like with the story you're saying about the store, what are we doing? We are taking, we're, we're working, we're getting jobs, building somebody else's wealth. Mm -hmm. Right, not our own. We're building somebody else's wealth. We're taking a salary to build somebody else's wealth. We take that same money, which is you know, again, it's money is cash. It's like debt. We take that same money and we give it to somebody else's community so that yeah. they can build their own mm -hmm. community. So that person now is getting two salaries because you know the people in his community are shopping at his store and we are shopping at his store. Yes, you understand. Right. So that's why black people get told by every other race not to unite mm -hmm. because it's the same in the West and it's the same in Africa and it's the same in the Middle East. Wherever black people go, we are always and forever putting our money into building somebody else's community. And, 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 you know, one of the bad things about that also is that because most of the African-American uh, uh, men mm -hmm. in particular that come into Islam and, and, and now the successful ones, excuse me, the ones that are successful. Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, one, one of the, the head uh, brothers at Google, I know him, uh, a head, and he's an African-American. I know a, a brother who's over, been over in Saudi for years. He's, you know, highly, very highly successful, highly mm -hmm. successful. And I've seen how the, 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 the Southeast Asian community understood that they had to get their tentacles into these two individuals mm -hmm. to bring these individuals away from the Afri their African-American counterparts mm -hmm. and make them distribute their money through them, their pipelines. Mm -hmm. And because both of them ended up marrying South, you know, they made sure that they, oh, he, oh, he has to have this. He, he yep. married his sister, he can marry his. And they worked that whole thing out so that the dynamics of their power mm -hmm. wouldn't dissipate into the into their community, but it would dissipate into the other people's community. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And that, and when I seen that, when I, I thought about that for a long, I was like, wow, mm -hmm. now it's no way they would give somebody else their daughter like that. Exactly. You know, exactly. there's, there's so many stories of, 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 uh, you know, a, an Arab girl or uh, this Pakistani girl wanting to marry this African-American yeah. boy or, or African boy and th just everybody loses their marbles when that happens. Yep, exactly. Well, guess what? Guess what? You know, you know, the, uh, you know, when Allah sees the people is not worshiping him properly, what does he do? Change. He replaces them. He replaces them. He replaces them. These people are getting replaced. Yeah. And we can see it right before our eyes all over the world. Yes. All yeah. over the world. So if we, if we as Black people don't want to be replaced like they're being replaced, then we are the ones who have to pick up the pace. We are the ones who have to speak for ourselves and not let other people speak for us and tell us what to do. We have the Quran. We have the Sunnah already. Why do we need somebody else to tell us what to do? Mm -hmm. We don't. No. You know? We need to be much more independent thinking and we have to work together as a unit but uh black people need to to really wake up we have to work as a community and as i said before 
the awakening is happening. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody else operates like a community, but they tell you it's haram to operate like a community because it's rate racism. How does that work? I have no idea. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it seems to work, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, you know, everybody, like the whole world, including the ulama, they can practice nationalism. They can practice, you know, uh, they're, they're working with their own family and their own nation and their own tribes and their own people. They can practice that. I and mean, we see them practice that. And we know that they're practicing that. But when it comes to us practicing that, a people without a nation, okay? Black people don't have a nation. Every African country that is an African country is an African country because white people made it an African country, not because black people made it an African country. We don't have our own nation. Every uh, post-colonial uh, slave rebellion that we have right now is still, it's still run by the slave masters. Yes. Up until this very day. Yes. I mean, what, what what country was it that just got through pain? Uh, France. I think it was um, because they were real mad at um, uh, uh, this the, the country that uh, the Lavature. Um, uh, oh this man. He was the general. He beat the three greatest armies at the time. Uh, he beat uh, uh, France. Mm. Britain and Spain, mm -hmm. and he had a slave revolt, the only successful slave revolt, Haiti, Haiti, mm -hmm. Haiti, yes. Haiti, mm -hmm. and his name was, uh, Lavature was his, his, his last name, Le, Le Ressant, mm -hmm. I forget his first name anyway, but, uh, you know, they just got through pain, mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, the, the French mm -hmm. for, for basically you know, taking back over their own land. Yeah. That yeah. they were enslaved in. Yeah, they, they tried to, they punish those people for fighting for freedom. For fighting for their freedom, yes. They punish them and they continue yes. to punish them. Yes. Right? Yes. So, yes. We see this all over the world. All over the world, it's international. Yeah. You know? And mm -hmm. closing your eyes and, and putting the, the, uh, the blanket over your head, it, it's not going to stop the reality. Just because I said it doesn't make it any less true. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I mean? So that's why I said we today, in our time, we make power moves. Yes, we do. We're not, we're not concerned with people who are not trying to be brothers with us. Like this integration stuff. You know, integration, what was the goal of integration in the civil rights? And what was the goal of integration for white people, right? Why did, why did the civil rights leaders want integration? They only wanted integration because they realized that their schools were being completely neglected and underfunded from their so-called government. So they wanted their kids to get a good education because they made the link between education and economic, um, economic uh, freedom. Yes, they, 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 had that, they coupled them together. They coupled them together. So the reason why they wanted integration is because they wanted their Black children to go to the white schools to get a better, better education. education. That's it. And what did the liberals see? <laughs> see, a lot of people, they don't understand how deep this white supremacy stuff is, okay? Yes. They don't know that the Republicans today were the Democrats of yesterday and the Democrats right. today right. were the Republicans of yesterday, right? Yes. And they plan 30, 40 years ahead and they will always tell you the nice words to make you think they're not racist, but they hate Black people with a passion and they want to make sure that they, they remain a permanent under underclass. What were these people thinking about inter integration? They knew that the pot was boiling, it was going to explode, and that they didn't do something soon. Because remember, there were riots happening back in those days too. Mm -hmm. And they asked our Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King was their boy, they were funding him, right? They asked him, talk to your people, stop these riots. He said, I can't stop it. It's y'all who did all this, and it's, this is not coming from us. And this is from y'all, right? So what, 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 what were they thinking in their head? They were thinking, you know what? Let us do this integration thing, but we will make sure 
that when these educated Blacks come up through the system, they won't go back to the communities and fix it. Now, let me ask you something. When Black people get educated, do they go back to the hood or do no. they move to the suburbs? Uh, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, they, yeah. They, move Absolutely. To, they never go back to the communities. And that's what they were thinking. And up until this very day, that's what integration does. It's a giant sieve. All it does is it extracts all the brightest people. and the best. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's, it's up to white neighborhoods to build the wealth there. Yes. Like, and, like I just and, said, what happened, you know, between the African and the, the, the rich, the the successful African Americans, they made sure that they put their tentacles, Muslims, the Muslim yeah. convert, Afri the, the Southeast Asian community make sure they put their tentacles in them so that they can get that 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 power they can they can accumulate that with them exactly and take it away from the african Amer you americans know. yes and that's that's been the playbook from day one yeah and that's why you find dysfunctional massage in the black community today yeah right? it's the same it's the same it's like a copy and paste system and as you said as yeah you said. <laughs> yeah it's a copy yeah. and paste system you yes. know so if you're not thinking in terms of unity and um, tangible gains and economics and these type of things, you know, and if you're thinking that uh, your Kataba Tawheed and the Sula Flath will solve all your problems, then you're just like uh, the Beni Israel who worship the calf. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like what you were just like the Beni Israel who worship the calf. You have the Quran right there. You have the Sunnah right there. You have it will solve your problems. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean. But you are looking to something that's not Quran, not Sunnah, and something that's so, like some other, some other stuff to solve your problem. It comes from a, a different cultural. Uh, it comes from a diff, di different cultural perspective. Yes, like you said, the book from uh, Sheikh Bilal Phillips. Yes, you know, I feel the who Allah. This is. You know, this is this is something that you we could kind of we can extract more benefit from. Not only extract more benefit from, I think every masjid should be teaching that even to their own kids. Because yes, that book is relevant to the West. Relevancy, relevancy. Yes, yeah. it's way more relevant to the rest. 